Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers uh, review post-match uh, reaction video following Rangers' 3-2 defeat at Parkhead this afternoon. Michael Beale's men um, uh, losing the game. Kyogo with a double, Jota uh, with a goal as well. James Tavernier netting a double uh, in his, uh, his 99th and 100th Rangers goals, but unfortunately it wasn't enough. Uh, to take anything uh, from the east end of Glasgow this afternoon. If you want to get your point across to myself, Johnny and Joshua, just fire your comments in the description box, folks, and we'll try to get to as many as possible. Uh, a disappointing afternoon, Johnny, um, in, in the main for, for Rangers. I mean, it was a much better showing than what we've seen in, in the League Cup final. Michael Wheeler said that in his uh, post-match uh, interviews that he's given to both Sky and BBC. Um, and he's uh, ultimately uh, questioned the, the VER calls to rule out the Alfredo Morelos goal uh, midway through the first half. Uh, and he also said that if that has been ruled out, then Kyogo's second goal should have been ruled out for a handball from Jota from Ben Davis's header. He didn't say it was two uh, defensive mistakes that cost him from uh, uh, Davis and Suter, of course, with that slack back pass that allowed Jota uh, to add goal number three. Um, but your main reflections, main takeaways from what you witnessed uh, today? Well, there's a, lot, a number of talking points and there's a lot of things in terms of your interpretation of the game, how you can react to this one. There'll be a lot of people that will say the referee changed the dynamics of the game when he didn't allow the Alfredo Morelos goal. I think that's kind of cheap and easy. I, I, I don't think if you look at the full game, the referee has cost Rangers the game there. I think there's other factors at play, not least Ben Davies. I mean, I'm his biggest defender. I think he brings so much to the table when you're playing against teams that are sitting in. But schoolboy defending, terrible, terrible weak defending for that second goal. John Suter, I thought, had a good game, like Ben Davies, up until the mistake when he's he's played a really, really bad ball back to Alan McGregor. I, I think a a younger, quicker keeper probably gets to that. To be fair, Alan McGregor wasn't the quickest out there, but it's still a bit of a hospital pass, isn't it? And it just yeah. lays it on a plate for Jota. Remarkably, I think Rangers should have got back in 3-3. I mean, uh, you, you, you've got Tavernier missing an unbelievable headed chance. Yeah, that would have been quite something. It would have been a hat-trick and, and a couple of goals in a couple of minutes. So so there's just so much to get our teeth in. There's so much to talk about. But ultimately, Michael Beale has talked about it over and over. Joshua and myself have been at press conferences over and over when he's talked about winning games in the boxes, being strong in both boxes. And once again, it's Groundhog Day, folks. Rangers have lost a game on the back of weaknesses in both boxes. There's a lot of people on here who will be in the comments telling me Alfredo Morelos is the answer. And I thought he actually had a decent game today, to be honest. I thought yeah. he caused some problems. He got his goal. It was disallowed. It shouldn't have been. But... Kyogo gets two chances, he scores two goals. He scored five in the last three old firm games. Alfredo Morelos has scored two in how many? How many old firm games in total? Uh, it should, it should have been three, now, to be fair. He's got the one in the in the in the league cup. Um it's just yeah. it's not clinical enough. Take Morelos out of it because I know he's device is he's divisive, and just look at how many goals Rangers have scored in the last few games against Celtic. They're not causing enough problems. Um, the, the attacking players, they're not creating enough goals. They're not scoring enough goals. You rely on a James Tavernier to ping one in from 25 yards. Absolutely stunning free kick. Um, and then he obviously does well at the back post to get away from, from his marker. You've got to say that's that's just that's just excellent play um, for the second goal. But but for me, it's a game that's been decided in, in the boxes. And, and Beal knows that this is a problem. There's no more defending these players, really. We, I think we know where we're at with them. It's the same mistakes over and over again. How many times have we seen a, a break down the left, a cut back for someone to roll into the net? It, it, it just keeps happening. And Rangers need to find a solution because Michael Beale will be the next one under pressure. If it starts to get an, a narrative going that Beale is in Postacoglu's pocket in these games... Michael Beale will the next, be the next one who's going to start feeling the flames licking his feet. Everybody knows that he needs a summer. Everybody knows that he needs time to add his own players. But we know what Rangers is like. You're never going to get that time if you can't win old firm games. This has been the same for time immemorial, and it will continue to be the same. And um, 
he's under pressure. Make no mistake, two weeks' time he's got to get it right. Hopefully, today was a step forward. I think there's a number of ways, if you look at the game coldly, you take the fan element out of it and you just try and look at what happened. I think there's a lot there that Michael Beale can say that we can use that for the, the semi-final. But he really has to make sure that, that he does because uh, I don't think um, there'll be too many happy faces uh, in the fan base at this stage today. And uh, certainly that'll be made much worse if Celtic are going into a a Scottish Cup final against um, the two teams that they're potentially going to be up against, Falkirk or Inverness. Yeah. Feel a treble. That, 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 that's yeah. unthinkable. Uh, yeah. Uh, interesting point uh, coming. First of all, Ryan Kennedy, uh, good to have you at your company, buddy. Says, cheers from Canada, lads. First time making one of these live, but watch every day. Good to have you, uh, your support, Ryan. Uh, Jim McCarroll with an interesting point. Joshua he says, uh, apart from the obvious defensive errors, the most disappointing thing for me was the fact that Celtic were there for the beating and we still couldn't win. Uh, got to tend to agree with Jim there. I thought Celtic were well off it. They were very slack in possession. Were not at their best by any stretch of the imagination. Yet that is still good enough uh, to beat Rangers. Is that concerning for you, Joshua? Yeah, I think Johnny uh, sums it up and, and the piece that's just gone out sums it up as well. Um, Bill called this in the press conference yesterday when he said that not only Rangers do Rangers need to win the games in the boxes, but um, they need the big players to step up. And uh, there was two, two uh, moments in the game that, that kind of stand out to me. Derek has given a good picture of it. The first was... Within the first minute, when Kent wins that ball back high up the pitch, I thought Rangers' shape off the ball was really good. Um, the commentary, there was a lot of focus on Celtic misplacing their passes, but that was a, a byproduct, I think, of the way that Rangers set up to limit their their options and, and press high and be aggressive. I think Beal did as much as he can from, from a setup point of view. He, he gave the players a platform, but he needs them to go and execute it. Um, and, and the second moment is the start of that first half. Rangers have their, their period of ascendancy. Um, if they go 2-1 away from home, that, that, that's a big moment. Um, but they fail to capitalise on it. Morelos doesn't miss horrendous chances. But I think Kyogo scores chances in this game that, that, that Morelos has not and, and, and didn't. Um, I don't know what they expect the goals on either chances, but I wouldn't imagine they'd be, be too different. And I think that's the difference today, Derek. I mean, the, the, the decision for the first goal for me, although Rangers, I, I still think, had plenty of time to go and win that that game at such a big moment. And we, we can't um, kind of skip by that as well. You know, I'm not one to really talk about referee decisions uh, at, at all because I find it quite boring. But um, I, I just think it's it's the wrong decision in a game like that. You have to have to make the right one. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I think that's a difference. Beal spoke about his team winning the boxes, but he also spoke about players attacking players turning up in big moments. And you know, even when the game's at three two, you have that moment where Kent and Morelos are passing the ball to one another um, consistently. You have the moment where Sakala isn't watching the line and then plays it into Cholak instead of taking the shot. I think that's the difference, and I think that's what will frustrate Beal so much. Rangers, I think, had the platform uh, to go and get something today. And we can come on to talk about individuals, but I think if you look at the performance of, of Nico Raskin in the middle of the pitch, it's just more evidence and more proof that um, what everyone knows, that you need new players, um, the squad needs new players. And when you're looking at the performances of Kent and Morelos today, can you say with confidence that the, the topic that's dominated the season, their futures, can you say with confidence that they are the players to take Rangers back to the summit from the second place position that they're in? I don't think so. There's a whole other topic around them, the fact that if they do leave the club and walk out for free, um, given what their values are, that, that's a separate podcast. But I think in isolation, you see what Beal um, can do with his team, perhaps how far he can take them without the, the required investment that, that, that needs to come in the summer. Yeah, uh, just touching on uh, the Morelos VR call, it was a, an absolute joke for me. Um, I did say during the week when Kevin Clancy was a, appointed the referee, I hope we're not talking about the referee after the game. And unfortunately, we are. Surprise, surprise. Another woeful display for me uh, from uh, Kevin Clancy. Ali McCoy in co-commentary let rip uh, and also at Nick Walsh in, in the VR booth in which he says honest to goodness it's absolutely embarrassing the way we are running VAR absolutely embarrassing we are a laughing stock he gives him a little nudge Nick what are you seeing son uh, and even Andy Walker uh, said likewise uh, as well uh, that Morelos uh, goal with of course he was penalized for uh, a foul apparently on uh, Alistair Johnston um, Johnny uh, is, are we right to chastise the, the match officials for that one do you reckon 
Yeah, listen, it's it, it's a goal for me, you know. I'll tell you why. Um, I was sitting at my, my keyboard typing, it, typing, and I looked up and I saw Morelos push the player, uh, Alistair Johnson, and then put the ball in the net. And I, I thought, right, that, that's not going to be a goal. Continue to, to write. And then, uh, as, as I was expecting it, it was, it was chalked off. Uh, Ali McCoyst and uh, Andy Walker were absolutely slaughtering the referee. Um, and I just thought, it's, a bit, it's, it's not a goal. What's the problem? And then I saw the replay, and I realised what happened was the players were essentially in a tete-a-tete -tete where they were both fouling each other, pulling at each other. Morelos, um, his shirt is wrapped into um, Johnson's hand. You can see that it's pulled right round. And the end of this sort of tugging, Morelos has got the best of him and, 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 and moved away from him. Now, looked at it, if you look at it just in its isolation, it looks like a shove. But it's not a shove because it's in it's part of a continuing whole yes. of the two players clashing. It's something that you see in every game, and for me, therefore, not a penalty. Um, sorry, and uh, therefore, a perfectly a goal. legitimate goal. Yeah. So I'm, I, I just I don't understand why... They don't go back VAR and look at that and look at the whole incident and see that play out. I don't know how you say, at what point does one stop fouling the other? Do you know what I mean? It's And and, and how do you know who to give? Yeah, well, I think the point is what we said, I think we said at halftime on space is if you give that as a foul, every single yes. free kick, every single um, corner, there will be a foul for the defensive team. Yeah, because obviously football... I mean, you, you're gonna you're gonna get touched tight to your opponent, aren't you? So yeah, I t totally agree with that. I think it's um, yeah, I was I was amazed that that it wasn't overturned just because of how, um, as you say, Johnny, it, it, you some people would say you give the benefit to the attacker in decisions like like that, but I think it was just two players wrestling for the ball and and you know one won it. So yeah, I was I was surprised that there was no uh, further. It, it wasn't overturned. Yeah, it's a joke. RFC72 says, uh, referees should have to come out and explain decisions and take accountability. They get away with far too much. Uh, fat chance of that happening anytime soon. But uh, lo and behold, we will, we will have Dermot Gallagher on, on Monday, no doubt, on Referee Watch on Sky, saying how uh, bonkers a decision it was. Uh, and as Alan McCoy said, it's, it makes the game a laughing stock. For me, the VR check was was over in a flash. It was, uh, it was uh, so quick that it wasn't a, a proper check, if you like. And, and yeah, listen, I think it was a... Uh, a real, here's, the real thing with, here's the thing though, Derek. Obviously, like if that if that goal is allowed, right? Of course, it changes the complexion. We don't know what happens from there. Yeah. But there was more. I like to think, you know, in this show and the Rangers support in general are more analytical than going down the sort of conspiracy theory route, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? And sometimes in football, decisions go against you. There's no doubt about that. And I think there was enough in that game to be worried about or to chew over or to say these are key moments that you kind of can't focus on that alone as as the problem. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you've got John Suter uh, hospital pass. You've got uh, Ben Davies not clearing the ball twice. You've got a, a variety of issues in terms of finishing when you have very, very good opportunities. I think there's bigger issues at play than a, than a VAR check that didn't go Rangers' way here. And it's important to focus on that and not have it being around referees, which is what other other they, people have done in the past. And I've slaughtered them for doing that. Yeah. And um, and I, I, I think it's a one-off. It's a bad decision. We all agree it's a bad decision. It's not a one-off, though, in terms of refereeing. I mean, it's they're not good enough, I think. is uh, Well, I, listen, I... I'm with you, Derek. You tweeted earlier on today that the referees absolutely need to be made full time. I completely and utterly agree with you. We needed VAR, and now we need the refs full time because how can you yeah. be an expert? How can you focus yourself on being better? It was a high level of professionalism required to be a full time referee, a referee if you're not full time. Yeah. Uh, it's it's absolutely required. But Listen, managers are calling for it in the lower leagues in England, full-time referees. So the fact that the top flight in Scotland don't have it is, uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, uh, it needs sorted out. Yeah, that's, right. that's... I have to stop you there, mate. Just before we get any further, it's normally me and you that are getting slaughtered in the comments. But Joshua, there's one absolute beauty there about Joshua, <laughs> um, which is Stuart McHenry. I salute you <laughs> for being one of the few that gives Joshua a tight 
time for his sure. comment. He could have spelled it. He could have spelled it right. And but... full of beep. <laughs> yeah, we, don't want, we don't want to get it's the monetization wrong. taken off. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> a bit of, all, a bit of levity so... there. Thank you. It's yeah. all about opinions, uh, yeah. Mm. Joshua taking some of the heat uh, for a change. Um, let's get on to Malik Tillman, Joshua. Lots of comments yeah. coming in uh, regarding Malik's performance. Luke Gibson says Tillman hasn't had a good game against him yet. Stuart Ballantyne echoes that. He says uh, Tillman was poor, but I thought Ryan Kent was awful and he needs to go. He was like a man down. Um, Tillman, for me, was poor. Graham Mitchell says uh, Tillman train has been derailed. I wouldn't pay the £5 million pounds for him. Um, he's fallen into this for He's fallen into this Joe Rebo bracket for me, Joshua, where I can't... Well, Joe Rebo really, I thought these games sort of passed him by when he played for Rangers. Similar, it's, it's, Malik's obviously in his first full year as a professional. I think we should uh, cut him some slack. But in the old firm games thus far, he, he's not had that, that uh, statement game yet, has he? <laughs> No, no, he didn't. And today it definitely wasn't a statement game. I, I don't think he was the worst attacker. I thought he did quite a lot of ball carrying, but um you know, there wasn't that end product. Um I think Kent was was the attacker who had the the probably the least effective game. Um but, but I think that was the, the difference overall. Um Rangers in, in the final third when they got the ball um in, in those dangerous areas and you know the expected goals I'm sure isn't a high total for Rangers come the end of the game um, but they had so many moments where they were potentially breaking away in the final third they won the ball back in, in potential areas um, but yeah, I mean to, to the point of Tillman not having a big game Derek yeah it's right um, you know we can say all the mitigation um, and the fact that I don't think he's the, the main problem from a game like today but equally these are the games that, that you're judged on um, at Rangers and there's kind of not much um, mitigation to, to that fact. The, the, the point is that you need to, to have big games. Um, as someone like I think Raskin in, in his own way did today, obviously starting in his um, first old game, first old firm game today, I, I think that's a game that if Rangers have a couple more clinical attackers, they should go and win, um, which is obviously I think where a lot of the frustration will, will be will be there with today. So you, you can, I think, throw everything out with Tillman when he has a game like today, I totally agree that it wasn't his best performance. I don't think he was the worst player on the pitch. And, and I do think he needs a big game-changing performance in an old firm game because that's yeah. it is just what you're judged on as a player or, or a manager kind of up here in, in Glasgow. Yeah. Uh, another name that's been mentioned, is, uh, as Ian McDougall says, is Ryan Kent. He says uh, he can go with absolutely nothing uh, today. Uh, he was pretty anonymous, uh, Johnny Ryan Kent. It's, it's a fixture that down the years, historically, he has uh, tended to uh, thrive in. Um, however, we know what his contract situation is at the moment. He looked like a player that has mentally checked out today. Um, uh, didn't uh, cause any threat really to the Celtic backline that from what, what I witnessed. Um, he was poor today. Uh, what does it, the future hold now for, for Ryan Kent, do you reckon? Well, it's a bad day to be a Ryan Kent fan, which is what I am. Um, I, I, he didn't perform at all. Um, but... <laughs> Let's be real. Ryan Kent's going to be a massive player for Rangers in these coming few weeks. <laughs> Rangers are going to need him. Not, 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 not if he produces that level of performance. And, and that's fair point. And that's a fair point. But are you really going to drop Ryan Kent and bring in someone else? I don't think the squad's good enough to say that there's someone better than Ryan Kent potentially lurking, lurking out there. I don't think so. He was, he was poor. There's no doubt about it today, but I'm not. I'm not dropping Ryan Kent um, unless he produces levels like this over weeks, and uh, he's been excellent with the exception of this game. So I'll defend him on that front. But he used to be a guy you could hang your hat on to cause Celtic problems, and that that's kind of disappeared in the last couple of years, yeah. especially under Ange Postecoglou. They've gone for um, really physical, aggressive quick fullbacks they've recruited well in those areas and Ryan Kent's not had enough joy out of them for a Rangers winger uh, it's as simple as that I think this might be the performance that swings a number of fans into saying they actually wouldn't be that fussed if uh, Kent disappeared and, and went somewhere else now I think perhaps there's a growing sense that um, quite a lot of these players in the squad who maybe would have been 50-50 now after another defeat, are probably erring towards more likely to leave. And Beale again has said this. Credit to Michael Beale. 
everything that's happened he's kind of outlined previously in press conferences. If you're paying attention, Michael Beale said the future of a number of these players would be decided by how they finish the season. I think we're just seeing that now. And uh, the fans and their uh, reaction to, towards someone like Ryan Kent today, if you look at social media, I think that speaks volumes. And 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 Derek, it's understandable. I've put in a defence of him, but at the same time, I can totally understand your position because it's a very difficult place defending a performance like that today. I, I, I thought yeah. he pressed well for probably th- the first 30 minutes. And then after that, he just kind of disappeared around, down a trap door, didn't he? And, and, and didn't produce very much. And And, yeah. and that's... Really, really disappointing for a player of his quality who we've seen perform really well in, in previous old firm games. It's hard to forget that 4-1 game at Ibrox where he absolutely torched Scott Brown um, for the entire game playing in the number 10 position. But, you know, he was getting on the ball that day. He, he wasn't today. He wasn't able to to really affect no. any meaningful attacks. And, and that was, I think, really disappointing to see. Derek, you see, just to, to comment on Kent, I, th- I think that's a good point he, because he was wider and kind of isolated against Johnson, who's a really aggressive fullback. I, I don't think he had a good game. I agree with Johnny that these are the type... No, no one, I think, when Rangers have lost as many old firms recently as they have, no one should be invincible um, from potentially not being there next season. And again, you've, you've got to ask, is, is Kent um, going to be your difference maker next season? I, I think his game's changed from... From that first season where he was uh, someone who really impacted the game from, from wide areas. Now, we obviously, we've seen him uh, kind of move into the centre a little bit more. Um, but I just think overall, he, he struggled to... It was a bit of a different shape, I guess, because of the way that, that Rangers were pressing. But I just think overall, he, he struggled to impact things at all. And, and as Beal said, these are the games that will decide uh, the futures of indi- individual players. I, I think what's let what lets Kent down is his decision-making in moments. And and I think today, if you look at that first minute where, I know it's the first minute of the game. It but, picks um, a lot of uh, Yeah, I think... He runs down think, a body sack, really, and yeah. picks the wrong option, doesn't he? Yeah, and, and, and probably for that late one where him and Morelos are kind of playing the ball between one another, um, that, that was costly as well. So, yeah, they're, they're, I think it would be hard after a game today to, to sell... Um, that, that Kent and Morelos are, are the two players that are going to spearhead you forward. And there is just, I guess, a time to to move on from from anything at a football club. You need new players at certain points. Again, Raskin, I think, epitomises that today. Freshness in a key area of the pitch. Um, 21 years old, recruited for an affordable fee. Um, obviously going somewhere in his career. And, and, and I thought today he was uh, definitely brought aside from Tavernier with those two goals, Rangers' uh, best player. Yeah, I'm glad you bring, brought him up because um, uh, a comment uh, that's uh, popped in which says uh, Raskin and Tav are the only two of pass marks today. Front three were terrible and offered absolutely nothing. But there's a few comments coming in uh, on uh, Nico Raskin, Johnny. Um, I thought he, w- he was good today. Him and Tav uh, were uh, uh, my two uh, best performance performers. I, I would say we'll, we'll touch on Tavernier shortly. But uh, Nico Raskin, great to have him back in the team. Uh, I was actually surprised to see him last the, uh, the full ninety, to be honest with you. But he's just got that uh, ability to pick passes, looking forward all the time, looking to pick his teammates in advanced areas. He's got that bit bite and dig in the middle of the park. Rangers have needed someone like that for years, have they not? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he's going to be a great player and an important player to build the rest of this uh, this revamp around. He, and I said this in the in the spaces that we had on Twitter at half time, he's got this gift that, that every good player has, where when they get the ball, they look like they have a second or two more than they actually do. You always remember, you know, Rangers at the back playing the ball back to certain defenders and feeling like they had no time whatsoever on the ball. Uh, big lumps uh, of the past whereas if you look at Raskin even when he's he's marked he just has that ability to shif- shift his weight to uh, shimmy left or shimmy right or, or or take a touch in a certain direction that just gives him that, that space and time so he's clearly a good player and listen I said this in my piece um, that I've, uh, uh, where I talked about the, the game immediately in the aftermath I think there's a core there now I think if you look at Cantwell, Raskin, um, Goldson, Tavernier, uh, I mean, I think Ben Davies is part of this. I know a lot of people probably disagree on the back uh, on, on the back of today's game. I thought he was actually really good with the exception of that one error that he made. 
Um, it was a really, really bad error. It was a, it was an atrocious error. It was a shocking schoolboy moment. But that apart, I thought he was good, and I think he's going to be very, very important for eighty percent of SPFL games. I think there's enough floating about in there that you think there's there's a decent makings of a team in there. But but there's also a lot of change required. You think you're going to need a new goalie. You're 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 hopefully going to see Yilmaz come in and, and make left back his own. But you're probably going to need another couple of midfield players. You're going to need a, a a winger to replace Kent. I would imagine you probably want a right winger. You probably want a centre forward. There's a lot of transfer work that needs to be done, and, and I think Rangers need to go into the market and hit the net, uh, metaphorical net, as many times as Celtic have. Again, this is a Rangers podcast. We don't want to sit here and wax lyrical about Celtic, but if you look at what they've done in the transfer market, you know they lose a player in Josip Juranovic, who is Croatia's right back, reaching the semi-final of the World Cup, and uh, they go out and get a guy who, who, if anything, has come in, hit the ground running, and looks better. I thought he was man of the match today, probably. And that kind of recruitment has, has just been sadly lacking at Rangers over the last three years. Nico Raskin's making a a really, really good impact. Todd Cadwell, Cantwell making a really good impact. That bodes well for Michael Beal, but Postacoglu has been doing this for two years. Michael Beal needs to match that. That That's that's the be-all and end-all. But at least Raskin has given us a sign of what we can look towards in the future as, as people who are covering Rangers, Rangers fans watching this, they can see that there's a glimmer of hope with him in that midfield because he certainly did not look at a place going up against those Celtic boys. Yeah, yeah, I think that was uh, certainly one of the, the few shining lights today was uh, Nico Raskin. Uh, lots of comments coming in about Alan McGregor, Joshua. Um, we were having a discussion before we came on here regarding the, the John Souter back pass and could McGregor have got, got, gotten out to the ball quicker than he did? Uh, there's a comment coming in saying that a younger keeper would have got to Souter's pass uh, and lots of comments coming in uh, Well, regarding the first goal from Kyogo CGM55 said McGregor should have saved the first one as well. Uh, I don't know if that, that's fair comment, but what do you make of the back pass goal, Josh? Should, is McGregor a bit culpable for that goal? Uh, yeah, well, obviously it's not his fault, is it? Um, because the, the pass is, is short. I did think watching it back, um, I don't know if he was maybe indecisive as to whether he could get it. I don't know if he thought if he went in with his hands, then he'd maybe risk a penalty and, and, and a red card. Um, mm. I, I guess we'll see, especially with the kind of numbers tomorrow, what the... What the, the overall goalkeeping performance was like, it's not a new conversation, Derek. I, I don't think Alan McGregor's the, the main culprit today. Um, Rangers obviously definitely need a, a goalkeeper in the summer. It's nothing new there that McGregor's yeah. going to be, I think, 42 next year. So, again, it's just a time to to buy new players, isn't there? Um, I, I do think it's worth talking as well about Beal's all, the kind of overall approach. I, I thought this was night and day. In many ways, Derek, to the especially the cup final, where I thought Rangers off the ball, they were so deep, um, conceded a lot of territory, and stayed really compact. And then on the ball, rushed it forwards. I, I thought that, as we said before, the team selection showed the type of game that that Beal wanted to play, um, and, and was ultimately let down by um, the execution. Looking ahead to the semi final, which is what three weeks away, two weeks away. Um, end of the month there's a, a blueprint for how Rangers I think can stop Celtic in, in possession um, but the, the difficulty is again do you have confidence that they'll be clinical enough going into that game because it is going to be you'd imagine Morelos that, that plays again um, he, he should do, do better with those two chances but out of outside of that I, I do agree with Johnny that I thought he caused Celtic quite a lot of them problems gave Rangers a, a focal point to play into I think there is a template there, but again, you're looking at those players and as Beal called it before the game, you need difference makers to, to step up. You need big players to execute and be clinical. All I guess the manager can do, aside from impact the game with subs, is give them a, a template to go and try and win the game, which which I thought there was today. But aside from Tavernier with, those, with that free kick, with that uh, header at the back post, there wasn't a player that I think was able to, to step up and make the real difference in the final third. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, listen, I think that's that's the difference between the two teams at the moment. Celtic have quality, especially off the bench, uh, whereas Rangers are, are lacking in that department. But it's something that Michael Beale has said uh, publicly in his press conferences, of course, so there will be a much changed Rangers next season. Um, of that, there is no doubt. Many players will be, uh, that will have been the, the last uh, Old Firm derby, uh, particularly at Celtic Park, of course, at Parkhead. Um, of course, we've got the, the, the semi-final later on this month, which is uh, absolutely massive in terms of Rangers season. I spoke to Gregory Vignal ahead of this game. He said that all Rangers season hinges on that. Of course, it could end at the end of the month. Let's hope we're, uh, we're not. And we're looking forward to a Scottish Cup final at the start of June, which is a, a late finish to this season, obviously, because of the World Cup uh, at Christmas time. Um, but let's get to uh, a few comments just on Beal. Uh, this uh, comment from Deepak, he says, uh, Beal hasn't won an old firm. That's worrying. We only have one game left now in the season. Uh, you touched on that, Johnny, isn't it? Uh, I mean, we don't want that narrative to uh, to, to um, sort of um, expand where you get Ange Postacoglu has uh, Michael Beale's number. I thought today Rangers were much improved and, and, and there isn't much between the teams. If you look at it, there have been, of course, the game at Ibrox. I thought Rangers were unfortunate not to emerge with all three points in that game. The game in the League Cup final, as much as Rangers were poor, it was... Uh, they weren't blown away by any matter of means. I think Celtic weren't their best at hand and either, to be honest. And I don't think they were at their best today. Um, Rangers running them close. Don't think there's much in it, but I think Beal, if, if he does recruit well in the summer, I think there'll be a lot of optimism that he can uh, turn this around and put Rangers back on top. Yes, but let's be honest, it's going to have to be... Very, very, very good work done indeed because Celtic have a lot of good players now and they've got a lot of players that have got market value they can go out and sell. And if you look at what they've been doing under Costa Coglu, um, they've been replacing players that leave with better players. It's quite uh, a difficult situation for any sporting director and manager to be in. I think um, it would be nice from a Rangers point of view. Um, I think probably if um, there was a real uh, investment in terms of bringing in as many high quality players as they can afford. Now, obviously, Rangers are not able to go out and spend money they don't have. But uh, I think if you can front end whatever monies you might have for the season into the summer and try and make sure that you're you're throwing it all into that summer budget to ensure you start the best possible way, because there's no point in going into the summer uh, leaving money in the budget for for January and uh, the season's already done by then. I think get 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 the budget spent. Um, if you need someone in, in January, then the season's probably already done. I think it just needs to be loans or whatever. And uh, make sure that Michael Beal has got that squad that he needs to attack this next season because that's what we're looking at now. This, this season is effectively a it's busted done. flush. We've got a game against uh, Celtic on the 28th so in, 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 in a couple of weeks' time. Um, and uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll be in a, a much better uh, position to understand where exactly this season is. But... It's going to be quite a painful end if we're talking about the end of April and everything's done and Celtic are on the verge of a treble. Because make no mistake, uh, whoever gets the Scottish Cup final, it's probably the biggest gimme in Scottish Cup final history, isn't it? Against uh, Falkirk yeah. or Inverness, two teams that are are, are are not performing particularly well at the moment. Well, even if they were, I think uh, if you're coming up against it, no disrespect to either of those two, you'd be expected to to, to win against them in the, in the Scottish Cup final. So yeah, the, the semi final is absolutely massive at the end of this month. Um, just touching on that, um, there's an interesting point here with the league obviously uh, gone. Uh, this comment here is it time to give the young boys a chance to see if they can offer anything next season? The likes of Rice, Lovelace, Lyle, Ishaka, Lowry, uh, NCO, uh, and Lindsay. Uh, Josh, I think we'll see that the, the young lads. I think we may see Robbie McCrory, you know, uh, at some point. I, yeah. When I say that, I don't think with that, it's a huge game coming up at the end of the month, of course. I'm not entirely sure if you'll get an opportunity prior uh, to that, that semi final. I fully expect Alan McGregor to, to keep his place for that one. But uh, Robbie McCrory is the one that springs to mind. Maybe see uh, one or two more of the young lads getting an opportunity. I'd be surprised. I mean, the, uh, watching the Beals pre uh, pre-match interview with Sky, he said so, uh, what I thought was quite a revealing comment. He spoke about nine games being in the way, um, which obviously is suggesting that he needs to get to the summer because that's when, for him, he can really implement ideas. Now, that's a, a novelty that especially a club like Rangers you don't have because 
you need to win every game and you can't afford to lose old firm games and you can't afford to lose uh, trophies uh, as we're looking ahead to the, the, the Scottish Cup semi-final. The difficulty is obviously that he inherits this situation and um, he inherited Rangers being nine points behind. There's wider issues that and discussions that we've had consistently over the last however long that, that means that Celtic are now on their way to winning their second trophy after uh, Rangers most recent title win and, and the, the difficulty that Beals had is he's had to inherit that and try and hit the ground running which he has done outside uh, of old firm games um, I'd be surprised if you see any of, of those young players what I think you will see and, and what today was was a look to the future with the team selection and that didn't happen in the, the League Cup final obviously after the League Cup final we were talking about the fact that Cantwell and especially Raskin um, had started on the bench. The midfield w- was a real upgrade for me today in, in the way that Rangers were able to to play through. Um, but, you know, Beal's whole thing about looking towards the summer, getting through these nine games, managing the season, it becomes a whole lot more difficult for him if he doesn't win that, that semi-final. Equally, in response to that, you have to say, what what more could he do today uh, as, as the manager? Maybe you could be critical and say, oh, he, may, he should have made a sub earlier. Uh, certainly, team selection was levelled at him after the League Cup final. But to, to go back to, again, what, what Johnny, I think, kind of summed up really well in his article, um, he kind of called it before the game. You, you can put players in certain situations, but they have to go and execute it. You need your big players to step up. And, and the difference for me today is, especially at the start of the second half, Rangers have their, their period of ascendancy. They have their... The, the the time where they can build some momentum and they miss not two glaring chances but the type of chances in this game that I think make the difference. Celtic go up the other end and by benefit of way of mistake they score theirs uh, but I think even when Rangers were kind of given the ball in favourable areas today even when they did uh, you know win the ball and pounce on Celtic's defence they weren't able to take those kind of opportunities in the same way so that's why I think it, it's difficult for Buell until he gets to the summer. Derek I, I was at the Rangers B team game so bring those names up um, um, if you've yeah, got it, so, I mean, yeah, no, I'll, I'll try and find them again. But it was lovely. Uh, the new boy is Shaka Thompson, is Shaka, obviously. Um, Rice Bailey Rice, who, who was sent off in said yeah. game, Johnny. Um, yeah, uh, I'll try, I'll try. NCO Paul NCO, of course, yeah. is yeah. one. Uh, Charlie Lindsay is another. Well, listen, uh, mate, these, these guys, right, they need to be tearing it up at that level, and they're not. Um, Bailey Rice is a really, really huge talent. That was. Obvious to anyone who's who's seen him play, I've spoken to people within the game who who really rate Bailey Rice. I think he's got a big future. He's another one of these guys when you give him the ball, looks like he's got more time than he has. Physicality already at his age is really good. He's powerful. He can get around the pitch. I, I think he's one that will come into first team reckoning in, in the weeks and months ahead. Well, not in the weeks, but in the in the in the years ahead. Um, the others you mentioned. Those guys are not there yet. Those yeah. guys need to concentrate on performing in the Lowland League. People talk about Lovelace quite a lot, and I think he's um, he's done it in flashes. I've seen moments where he looks quite impressive. Um, but I've it's also seen game. games where he's, 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 he's not really been involved, where he's uh, kind of flitted out. And if you're not doing it at the Lowland League, if you're not looking hu- really good in that level, then you're not going to be able to play for... Rangers, with all due respect, uh, you need to be able to consistently put together a run of form that shows you deserve a chance. I, I, in the games that I've seen, I've not seen enough of that, Derek, fundamentally, to, to say these guys. Uh, and I'm not saying they don't have a future. I'm not saying they're not good enough. That's I'm just they. saying, at the moment, no. No. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, there's a comment from Graham Robb. Uh, the B team struggling to draw with Stirling University. Yeah, there's a big jump. Michael Beale has said that before. It's um, uh, yeah, it's enormous. The fit they've been fifth year of Scottish football to playing not not only, not only top flight football in Scotland, but for Rangers with the pressures and all that comes uh, for, for for playing for such that of, of such a great club is uh, enormous. So um, yeah, uh, I'm sure if they're ready, then they'll get an opportunity. But Many of them uh, aren't at that stage. Um, what will get lost today, uh, Joshua, is uh, James Tavernier reaching 100 yeah. Rangers goals, which is uh, quite astonishing. Um, there will be a piece coming out, incidentally, folks, uh, during the week. Uh, I've spoken to uh, a number of uh, guys that, that um, uh, 
uh, that you have uh, and coached him and, and played with him prior to joining Rangers and they speak very highly of him. Um, but his 100 goals, uh, Joshua, goal number goal number 99 was one of the greatest free kicks I think I've ever seen. An absolute beauty. Um, we know he's got that in his locker. He could stick three goalkeepers in that goal. I don't think anyone would, would have saved that one. Right in the postage stamp, off the underside of the bar uh, and in. Um, great header as well to get, get reduce the deficit when Rangers were 3-1 behind. And then just seconds later, almost got a hat-trick at the, the opposite post with a header that just went uh, behind. I thought he and Raskin, for me, uh, were the two uh, top performers for Rangers uh, this afternoon. What did you make of Tavernier's display? Yeah, and I don't know about you guys, but when Barisic took that free kick, even though it was set oh, up yeah. on the left-hand side, you just thought, and I know it's confirmation bias after St. Avenue yeah. should have taken it, but yeah, um, yeah, no, it, it was a big performance from him, Derek. I mean, the free kick's just an exceptional hit. Um, a little bit closer than that one against Dundee United a few seasons ago, but reminiscent yeah. um, of it. And and then it's a, it's a really good a striker's header as well. Um unfortunate maybe with his, his header a couple of minutes after at the back post but the issue for Rangers is they didn't have enough players like Tavernier today um, I think able to, to step up and, and make a difference in the final third um, and, and and that's where the game w- w- was won and lost Celtic had a few of them, Kyogo and, and, and Jota Kyogo obviously with another couple of goals in, in the old firm um, but yeah you, you're right, that will get lost and Tavernier himself said I think on Sky after that it's irrelevant in this moment um, but it, it was a, a big performance for him and a shame for him personally that he's not on the right side of, of the scoreline on a day like that. But I'm sure in isolation, he won't he won't care about that. He will just be really frustrated that, um, you know, along with the rest of his teammates, that, that they've not been able to get the three points that they really needed to, to make this a title race for the last uh, yeah. month and a half of the season, which it definitely isn't now. Yeah, uh, Paul, uh, Paul uh, Scroggie gets in touch. His Tav carrying the strikers, sad but true. Why are strikers don't shoot is baffling. Pass, pass in the opposition box. I'm sure he's alluding to uh, the Kent and Morelos dallying about in the Celtic box, uh, Johnny, um, uh, as they chased an equaliser. Um, it's that indecision that, that, that that's the difference between Rangers and Celtic, isn't it? Every time Celtic go forward, they look threatening, don't they? They have so many options going forward. I know that they... they uh, they wasted an opportunity late on one of the boys when the subs that came on for them but they always look like they've got options and spare men when, when they stride forward to, uh, on attack whereas Rangers they get into good positions but uh, more often than not uh, they pick up the, the they make the, the, fi- the final pass or, or the, the wrong decision making in the final third which is the difference in these big games Yeah, absolutely Um <sighs> Beal's talked again. I keep saying this. I feel like I'm repeating myself. It's like Groundhog Day, like the, the team. But Beal has talked about this before about decision making in the final third and about it needing to be sharp. And it, yeah. ultimately, this is where Rangers are at as a team. It's not good enough. And uh, many of us have sort of uh, tried to defend them. And uh, there's a lot of players in this team who, over the years, have delivered. And there's other players who haven't. Um, the seven signings that came in, I think we can now start to really look and assess those and I think you just have to say it's not worked, has it, really? Um, Overall, um, uh, we're we're now in April and how many of them have actually consistently delivered? Have any of them? I think Tillman, I know I know, I know, he's poor today, but I think Tillman is the one that, that, yeah, that Tillman, stands out for me. Tillman, Lawrence, Tillman Lawrence, 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 you can't judge. Uh, Red Van, I don't think you can judge. Suter, I don't think you can judge yet. Yeah, but see if you're saying three of the seven, you can't judge. There's yeah, a problem not, there. It's, it's There's good. an inherent yeah. problem. Um, yeah. And, you know, Rangers can't afford to bring in th- seven players and three of them not play. Um, Cholak's had, had injury problems as well. I know that the club is spending a lot of time looking at the injuries and forensically going through what's happened, why it's happened, how how it can be better. Um, but I think this is something that, that maybe Michael Beal, we're going to ask him about in the next presser because... Um, it's been such a focal point of this season. Um, players that have come in that haven't been able to really offer what we expected of them uh, and perhaps injuries playing a massive part in that. I mean, of all those players that, that have come in, who have any of them gone through a period where they haven't been out? Now, Malik Tillman had a couple of weeks there, but apart from that, he's been pretty much there or thereabouts. All the other ones, even Rabi Matondo, has had a, a long spell out as part of their their season. So you have to say that the Rangers evolution that was supposed to take place this summer, that we all expected to be more radical than it was, 
effectively hasn't happened and this is effectively the team that has been there or thereabouts since 2018 with Nico Raskin and Todd Cantwell uh, very yeah, very good yeah. additions to that now obviously Tom Lawrence coming back in would be a huge plus you know getting John Suter up to speed and six months down the line it might well be that he's a he's a great addition I'm sure he, I'm sure he will be um Ridvan Yilmaz, obviously we have to say at this moment in time, the jury's out despite the fact that like, me and Joshua and I think yourself, Derek, like what we've seen. But we can't really tell because we've just not seen enough of him and Borna Barisic has picked ahead of him and that's a player you've spent nearly £4 million on procuring and, and, and that figure is, is out there in the public domain because it's been released by his former club. So um, it's not insignificant, uh, that money that was spent and he's... It's not considered to be better than Barisic. And I mean, Josh will talk to you for days about Barisic's limitations. We all know what he can do, and that's put the ball into the box with accuracy. But what he can't do is quite significant. You know, he can't go inside. He can only really go outside. He's a crosser. I think Rangers need a little bit more in terms of uh, having a bit of... Uh, a bit of uh, difference in, in how they're attacking when, when you've got yeah. a full back out there. Someone who can offer you different things at different times. A, a little bit of variation, that's the key word. Um, yeah. Bora Barsic doesn't really give you that. And uh, they've gone out and signed somebody who does, but he doesn't play. Now, I totally understand why he didn't play in this particular game. But the bigger issue this season has is, is undoubtedly been injuries, and that's absolutely massive. He need, he needs he needs to run the games from here on in. We need, uh, yeah, yeah. The fact there's no doubt. Um, interestingly, Michael Beale was asked about uh, recruitment in the summer. He says we need people to come into the team and start and push the guys that are playing today to make us stronger. We still need more energy on the pitch. We still need more bravery in certain moments. And I think you get out of football what you put in every single day. And he said uh, five or six more in the summer coming in to refresh the group. I think will be important and will be a stronger Rangers for it. That's what he told BBC after the game. It's been a disappointing afternoon for Rangers at Park Ed, losing by three goals to two to Celtic, uh, by a James Tavernier double uh, and netting his 100th goal uh, for the club. Um, big thanks to everyone uh, interacting with the show. It's greatly appreciated uh, as ever, as much as it's been a, a difficult one uh, to record after uh, a, a sobering afternoon in the east end of Glasgow. Big thanks to Johnny and Joshua. We'll be back again on Monday, folks, to delve deeper into the aftermath uh, of what happened uh, this afternoon. We hope you can join us for that. If you've not subscribed to the website yet, then now is the time to do so. Lots of great content on there just now. Just two pounds for two months worth of coverage. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. I uh, assure you, you won't be uh, disappointed. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, a fantastic offer we've got on just now. Just £2.99 per month thereafter. Even at that, it is a bargain as well. Okay, folks, I do normally say enjoy the rest of your Saturday, but hopefully you can enjoy as much of your Easter weekend as possible. And we'll speak to you again uh, on Easter Monday. Bye for now. <laughs>